Hi everyone, I'm Bob Pinto, the National Director of FCA Softball. Alongside me is Christina Miles, you know her, uh, because she does our weekly uh, video home run devotional and she does a fantastic job. She's a great young lady filled with the Holy Spirit. We're sitting here at my house, so if you see TVs and things in the background, just try to ignore it and focus on Christina, because what we're going to do is turn the tables on Christina today, and we're going to ask her some questions. Um, because I think she has a great story and uh, something that could encourage some, some of you young ladies that are going through the same thing that she went through. Um, this might be and probably will be a little longer than the other videos, but just bear with us. Maybe we'll make it in two parts. But anyway, I just wanted to ask Christina. The first question is, Christina, I think they need to know how your walk and when your walk with Christ began. Um, my walk started very early when I was a little kid. Uh, God's always been a huge part of my life. I don't necessarily have a one defining moment where I had a turning point in my life, but God's always been a presence and has been a huge part of my family. Um, growing up, and my parents have made it a foundation of our family, but always made it our choice. So I think that was really important and a good step, but he's uh, been with me every step of the way. So, so not everybody has a defining moment, which is okay. I mean, God works differently with everybody. So what's your life verse? Do you have one? Um, one that I turn to a lot is Jeremiah 29 11. Um, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, not to harm you, but to bring you a hope and a future. Um, I'm a worry wart and a control freak. So when it comes to things that I can't control, it's comforting to know that God has a plan and he has a purpose for what he's doing. And that verse kind of fits what you went through at college, I think. So Tell us, um, you ended up at Texas, West Texas A&M, so tell us how you, that, that came about for you. Um, I was bound and determined not to go to school far away from home, um, but God had other plans. And uh, I had two Division three offers and one Division two offer, and uh, God knows I can't make choices very well, so he made it pretty easy. Um, and yeah, I ended up six hours away. Oh, so that's good. So your family got to see you play? Yes. All right, so here we go. Freshman year. You started, correct? Yes. You started, and I think you told me you batted 407 for the year? I did. Okay. So, um, how did that make you feel? That you come in as a freshman, freshmen aren't supposed to bat 407, but, but how did that make you feel? Um, it felt really good. I felt like, you know, growing up I heard a lot of times you'll never be good enough, you'll never be big enough to play college sports. Um, but being able to come in as a freshman and make a difference on my team was huge because it wasn't that I was trying to prove people wrong, but it was making a statement to say, you know, I am good enough and I can play at this level. Yeah, so it didn't puff you up at all? Um, I don't think so, and God probably has a different opinion of that. <laughs> well, tell me about that. Um, it's hard not to let statistics and things get to your head, especially when you're doing really well. Mm -hmm. um, I ended up taking a senior spot my freshman year, and it's hard to balance how well you're doing with you know God's plan and making sure that you stay level-headed without letting it get to you and so you know, having that confidence but not having that confidence turn into too much pride. Okay, because the Bible says talks about pride. Yes, it does. So, so you went through your freshman year, you batted 407, you come back your sophomore year, I think you said you batted 350 plus. So everything is going great at this point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, there are there any bumps in their sophomore year? There were some, um, you know, everybody has slumps on and off the field and, you know, it's something to work through and something, you know, you get down and out, but just striving towards, you know, staying better and getting to that point where you can get back in the groove again. And now, how's your walk going at this point? It was, it was okay. It was, uh, after my freshman year, I did my first FCA camp and God really shook me up from that, but it's, it's hard not to follow your teammates or follow the school. Um, and things that you know everyone's doing. You know, I had some teammates at times that would make fun of me for being a Christian or things like that, which was interesting and hard to deal with as somebody who grew up really shy and would rather not be noticed. Um, so that was definitely tough. So you bat 407, you bat 350. You kind of you say that you weren't puffed up, but God had a different opinion. So the next two years are interesting. So maybe God has a way of bringing. The haughty down. So let's see if that happened here. So we go to our junior year. How did your junior year start out? Um, it started out okay. I was, you know, kind of had my ups and downs, and I was playing 
kind of my defense was struggling a little bit. I had made some errors that just shouldn't have happened. Uh, my bat, I wasn't finding the outside pitch. I was okay on the inside pitch, but everything else was just, I couldn't find a groove. I was just kind of stuck. Um, and that continued way longer than I wanted it to until coach kind of had enough and found myself on the bench. On the bench for the first time? Yes. Mm. So how did that feel? Um, terrible. It felt like I had no confidence in myself. Like he didn't have confidence in me. Like I, you know, was kind of in a slump that I couldn't get out of and I didn't know what else to do and couldn't figure out, you know, fundamentally what was going on or mentally or how I could get out of that slump and finally be better again. Mm -hmm. All right, so you're, so all of a sudden you're on the bench. Yes. For the first time in two and a half years. 407, 350, bench. Yes. What's going on in your head? Um, a lot of fear, thinking that I, you know, wouldn't be able to fix it or just, you know, watching the season kind of slip away and there was nothing I could do about it. Mm. Interesting. So what, I want to just, just for a minute, just tell, tell, just give some advice about that quickly, because I know there's others struggling with that. Um, sitting on the bench can be extremely hard, but that doesn't mean that God can't bring glory out of it. Uh, so many times, you know, we think we can only make an impact on the field, but God's got other plans. Um, especially, I think this year he was working in me more than anybody else to kind of help me realize that, you know, whether you are on and off the field, you're still... A child of God you're still a Christian it's not dependent on your performance on the field how much God loves you and that for me was a huge lesson to be learned that didn't really take the first time and so uh, as stubborn as I am God had to be persistent with that so that started you thinking that maybe you're on this team for another reason or was that later uh, it was a little bit later okay but Still, you're, you're, it, this is difficult. It would be difficult for anybody to be a two and a half year starter and then all of a sudden you're on the bench, especially with your stats for the first two years. But I just want to read a quick scripture and it's uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 57 and 58, which probably apply to you here. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord. See, that that would have been good for you at that point because I, I, when you when you know when you walk with the Lord, He's got plans for you, and they're better plans than we have. Obviously, your life first. Um, but at that point, it's confusing. So then you go, the end of your junior year comes, and this is interesting. Tell You told me your scholarship was taken away. Yes. So tell me... How they break that news to you? Um, it was actually an email uh, telling me that you know my coach emailed me and said, "Hey, we need to talk about your financial situation." And uh, I was like, "Okay." He was like, "I'll call you Monday." So I called him right away because I was freaking out. Um, he was like, "No, no, no. I'll call you later. We'll we'll figure it out then." And I was like, "All right." So uh, almost a week goes by, and he lets me know that my scholarship's been cut down to almost nothing, which. For me, it wasn't about the money. It wasn't about, you know, I, I need to make so much money playing softball. It was about, you know, am I wanted in this situation? Is, does God want me here? Does my coach want me here? I feel like I'm, you know, kind of being pushed out the door. Is this, mm -hmm. what is going on? So. That's tough, isn't it? Yes. Very tough, but I'm sure that God wanted you there and he was using you because what does uh, Philippians 4, 11 and 13 say? Now that I speak from, not that I speak from want, for I've learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. I know how to get along with humble means and I also know how to live in prosperity. In every, in any and every circumstance, I've learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both of having abundance and suffering need. And then of course, one of the most famous verses, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Did you? Did you ever think about that going um, through this? I did, knowing that you know it didn't depend on my scholarship or how much money that I was getting to say where I was going to play or when I was going to play. I actually uh, made the decision to transfer at that point, um, and God shot every door that I tried to open, and I didn't understand because I felt like you know God was taking me away from this place, but at the same time there was nowhere else to go. So really. Um, kind of humbled me in the fact that, you know, God had me there for a reason, um, even though I couldn't see it at that point. 
And when did when did I email you during all this? Um, I believe it was July of last year. So this is after right the scholarship was taken. Yeah. Yeah. See how God works. <laughs> so tell. <laughs> So you get involved with FCA softball. We won't go into how that'll happen, but you get involved with FCA softball, which, which is amazing, um, the way God works. Um, but you're still struggling. So you have FCA softball and God working on one hand, and you have you have a coach that doesn't believe in you on the other hand. 